for flag number one. Tu estás regalando. You don't have no shame. show you the greatness in this super cute so if you clicked on today's video one excuse the echo two can we admire this beautiful background okay today we're in my little brother's room super cute room shout out to the parents for this art mm -hmm. if you clicked on today's video we're doing a zanji does tea episode and it's been a long time since i filmed one of these so if i'm a little rusty bear with me i also just chugged down like a whole can of red bull but yes guys thank you so much for clicking on today's video Sanji does tea is a series that i have on my channel i um, also have a lot of new people here so shout out to you i've been posting a lot of vlogs lately a lot of hair videos and i post Sanji does tap Zanji does chat and Zanji does tea. Zanji does tea is what you're watching today. Episode number, okay, enjoy. Um, I have a whole playlist of these episodes. It's something I've kind of slowed down on making, but I do love to do it once in a while. Zanji does tea is a advice series where you submit your situation anonymously um every time in the description i put how to submit the mission rules all of that for now what i do is i go on reddit i make sure it's pre-approved subreddits that i can use stories from i do keep it anonymous i don't link the stories just to keep it even more anonymous um but oh and by the way for your background noise my boyfriend is playing video games so enjoy i really haven't filmed one of these in a long time and i'm just kind of like mesmerized by this super cute background and it's like eating with the blonde and the white you know so but today i'm reading off of my phone i usually have a more fancy setup you know and i'm looking at my phone right now usually have a more fancy setup with the mic blurred you know the lens with the blurry back all of that but let's just keep it cute like i feel like the background really just gives it sells it period you know what i'm saying so anyways let's get started oh throughout this too um don't be shy to give your input comments are encouraged everybody will chime in eventually maybe today maybe next year whatever they will chime in give their opinion again don't be shy to submit and let's get started okay so i usually read like three to four stories how how spicy should we get though you know what i'm saying let's start spicy the title of this one is i think my boyfriend is lying about his divorce come on now we met online something i never thought i would try but at the time i had been single for many years and my sister had recommended it to me i was reluctant at first cut it out oh so this person says she's 42 and her man is 48 I mean, it, that kind of makes sense, you know. She kept telling me how she had found many dates through this website and that I, it would be perfect for me as I'm always busy. I hope it wasn't Tinder. So I'm always busy working. So I could just use it in my free time or only when I feel like it. Anyway, one night over dinner, she told me about this man she recently met through the website and how perfect he was for her. Now she could see a future with him. So I gave in. I gave it a try, not expecting to actually find someone, but when I matched with him, John, we hit it off instantly. He was so funny and charming, so we exchanged numbers and then agreed to meet for coffee the following week. When we met for coffee that day, John told me that he had gotten a divorce from his wife. Here it John to the point, to the point. And I think, especially too at that age, it's like, it's good. Let's just get it off our chest. Like, okay, I'm 40, so you know, I have three kids two ex-wives and what about you i'm assuming you know i just think i'm 26 by the way for 25 but by the time i post this i'll probably already be 26 birthdays in 10 days okay he got a divorce from his wife of many years and he has a daughter with mm, and the daughter's my age Ooh, mm. i'm fine with this i'm not really the jealous type he assured me that he was ready to move on and that their relationship had been dying for ages yeah, I heard that that happens too. The first, if you hear crunching, that's my damn Crocs. The first day went well. After a few more successful dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend. I have always been very passionate about my work. I'm a nurse, so my job is very demanding and intensive, which means I work most nights during the week, but still, I wouldn't change it for the world. I thought this may be a problem with 
when we were first started dating as I wouldn't be available most nights and during the day after working a shift. I would be catching up on sleep and therefore not available to see him or talk to him. However, this was not the case. Carl thought it was perfect as he told me that he had a very busy schedule too with his work, business appointments, and making time to see his daughter. Carl told me that he was always free on a Tuesday, which happened to align perfectly with my work schedule as I didn't work on Monday or Tuesday nights. Dead. He started coming over to my house every single Tuesday pretty much every single week and now it, that was five years ago hmm. here's where it starts to get a little bit weird though since we agreed to see each other on tuesdays john oh sorry i've been saying carl john john i don't know if she's the the real fake name john has come to my house every single tuesday 11 a.m to 3 p.m but refuses to see me any other day and out of that time frame he has always arrived perfectly on time at 11 a.m and always left promptly at 3 p.m. No expectations, no exceptions. As well as this, every single time he comes over, he brings his tiny, dirty chihuahua. Why she's like, she gotta say that? Well, last week, I found out that this dog he's been bringing belongs to his ex-wife. His excuse for this was that he likes talking, t taking the dog on walks. They do 10 miles of walking every day together, but he works too much to commit to getting a dog for himself. I found this to be really odd, but I didn't question him about it any further. I know 10 miles might seem like a lot to walk the dog every day, and to be honest, I don't quite believe in myself, but I know that he does walk the dog regularly, as every Wednesday and Thursday he calls me while he, he walks the dog. This is also always between 4 and 6.30, with again, no exceptions. He always ends a call at exactly 6.30 and always calls it at exactly 4. She said, I'm peeping. I'm watching. What do y'all think so far? Like, it's really giving. Damn, it's just long. Anyways, a couple years ago, I got the dreaded call that my dad died. I was absolutely distraught as he was one of my biggest supporters and was always there for me. I asked John if he could come to the funeral with me, but he refused. Red flag number one. Don't piss me off. He really thought. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't forgive missing a funeral like those are that is very important he refused as the funeral was being held on a Sunday not during his free time to see me of course I was upset by this but eventually I convinced myself that he was probably just busy girl would have been like okay are we done or the final reason that made me think my boyfriend may be cheating on me with his ex-wife was last month at his daughter's wedding the wedding was to be held in Italy, and the plan was for John and his ex-wife to fly out there together four days before the wedding, and for me to fly out by myself a day before the... Tutta relando. Tutta relando would have been like, right. Right. So you think I'm done? So you think I'm done? Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Carl's daughter, John's daughter, had rented out a huge, luxurious villa for close family and friends to stay in before and after the wedding. I thought this was perfect. I have never spent the night with Carl. What? I'm sorry. Is that normal? How do y'all date someone for five years and don't? Not even one time. Spend the night. Am I just being judgmental? Is that, am I... Am I out of touch? Can somebody clarify for me? I'm sorry, I'm like, wait. <laughs> okay. I never spent the night with John, so I thought us sharing a bed would be a huge turning point in our relationship. So have they ever? Maybe that's not for us to know. What the hell? That was until I found out that I found out that John and his ex-wife would be sleeping in the villa and I'd be sleeping in a converted barn by myself at the bottom of the I'm not laughing at her. I'm just laughing at the audacity of whoever the fuck booked this shit and the audacity of John being like, yeah, so here's what's going to happen. You don't have no shame. You have the boss to just say this to this woman in her face. You know what it's giving? It's giving like, okay, she knows I'm cheating on her, so she can't be shocked. Or he, it's giving like, oh, she's stupid, so... We can do whatever we want. She won't notice. Literally, you know, John. 
Little do you know. He really thought he ate that. Um, anyways, they gave her dog shit for her bed. I asked Carl if I could please sleep in the villa with him, but he refused. So I refused to go to the wedding and stay home, period. And what's your fucking time? Because if you said, yeah, anyways, I went. I slept on the floor and I was just thinking about me and John. My sister is waking up. She's waking up. What do we think? What do we think, guys? What do we think? On top of this, I have never been to Carl's house. Ugh. In fact, I don't even know where he lives. And he has me blocked on his social media. Okay. We're not making it to five years. If you block me, we never slept together in the same bed before. Not even like a little hotel date. How the kids be doing. We, you block me on everything. Like I'm, I'm kind of lost there. Like absolutely not. Have I met your kids before? Like has she met the kids before? For who, who booked this trip? Like somebody said, who booked this trip? And how does she know that was the dog, the ex-wife's dog? Like how do you know nothing but but you knew that? Like it was kind of like dogs can't talk. So who told you that information? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. What else? I, I'm sorry, I'm just like blocked on everything? What? In five years? And we only hang out once a week for five years. I, this not, that's less than a part-time job. I am confused. I can only contact him on WhatsApp. Don't piss me off, girl, really. And you live in the States with me. Like this ain't like 90 Day Fiance. You live here with me. It's just I don't know where he lives. Girl. Okay, let's take a step back because we're not even done yet. But I feel like, okay, she's clearly a little older. So she clearly comes from a different time. And I don't want to say it's the da her daughter's fault. But I feel like her daughter didn't set some rules, some updates, some things to expect, some things to look out for. Now, like I said, I don't think it's the daughter's responsibility. However, it's giving like mom who doesn't really tell her daughter that much info. The daughter was just trying to help her mom and she really didn't, I wish mom was giving her daughter updates. Like, okay, tell me why John this week did this. Tell me why John invited me to this wedding. And, cause I think for the most part, most kids my age, and I'm assuming her daughter is my age too, they know, we know what the fuck is going on. So, Let's take it back. Let's say my parent is like single and she's like, period, I'm talking to this guy online. Oh, I'm going in. Okay. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Okay, does he have a Reddit? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Does he got a TikTok? What he do? What he be liking on TikTok? Do he got kids, wife? Like, he needs to be on it. And I don't think it's her fault. It's like, you know, and this is the exact shit that makes, that deters older people from doing dating sites because of bullshit like this. And he ain't shit, first of all. But we're not even done yet, guys. Like, we're at, right at the bottom. And he, I know she didn't check that phone. Mm, how could she? <laughs> That's not good, guys. So don't check people's phone. Um, I think Car I think John may have been lying to me when we first met about his divorce to his wife. I'm starting to get the impression that he's actually having an affair with me and cheating on his wife. Damn. I had to look back like, damn, y'all hear? Y'all, y'all hear this? Cause that would be crazy. Cause it's it's really a sick motherfucker. So sorry, I've talked about this on my channel before, but cheating. Is this me? The fuck off. I'm gonna whisper it because I'm trying to be gentle with my approach. But that shit. Okay, and you have to be a piece of literal shit to do this to that lady and the other lady too. And good on her for not like, for seeing it that way because I wouldn't have. I would have been like, I probably would have been like, um, he said he was done with you, so I'm confused. She's like, damn, like, he might have like caught me up in some bullshit. And of course, she has reason to think that. And of course, she has reason to be fucking pissed about that shit because are you kidding me anyways let's continue he's so secretive with me and appears to still have a lot of contact with her 
or maybe they decided to rekindle their relationship after their divorce or maybe i'm overthinking it and they're just close friends i mean they do have a daughter together so am i being crazy what should i do here's what the people are saying comment down below what you think about this as a whole some asshole bro i used to do this in my 20s with my girlfriends hmm. put them on the schedules truth be told they all found out about each other anyways somebody was like who has the time for that like just have one girlfriend yeah because you thought you ate with that someone said you said you're a nurse yikes and someone said yeah your lack of critical thinking is terrifying to be a nurse okay why y'all gotta do her like that though like i feel like okay comment down below but i feel like the two some people are good at their personal life some people are good at their job some people suck at their personal life some people are good at their job like i don't i don't really like that there's just a lot of hate comments out there for being a nurse. Let me try to find something. Hire a private investigator and find out the truth because you are the mistress. Damn. Once you have all the evidence, confront the wife. Okay, who has the time or money for that though? You know what I'm saying? That just sucks. You know, like that just, I'm like mad for her. Let's just get to the point. Let's say you're going through this similar situation. If you there's a healthy approach and there's a unhealthy approach unhealthy approach you see this person once a week and it seems like y'all barely hang out you don't know where he lives does he know where you live i don't remember but i'm blocking i'm blocking ghosting if i got the money i will move to a whole fucking different house <laughs> and what about it you're a psycho not her but the guy he's a psycho he's a weirdo he doesn't deserve any more of your time he's very much lying He's very much weird, like, and after five years, you'd think somebody would, you know, but on the healthy side, confrontation, and I know some people don't like that, and they're like, I don't want to do that, like, it, it is what it is, it's clear as day. Guys, sometimes we need to sit down and see what the hell is really going on. It's not the best situation, but let's say he's like, oh, I'm homeless, and I actually live with my ex-wife, and, um you know my family has a lot of love and <laughs> empathy for me because of my homelessness and they're trying to help me i don't fucking know but sometimes when we ask people straight up um she said here are the receipts what is what's going on what can they do and what can they say but it seems like with your mental space and this like mental you know i don't think i think if he gives you an answer and you believe it again he'll just keep doing it so um no i cut him off and yeah mm -mm. and just not just just no let's go to the next story what did y'all think about that that was actually ridiculous <laughs> that just like uh sour taste in my mouth let's do a more serious one trigger warning drug addiction how can i make my drug addicted girlfriend feel safe with me recently i've met a girl and we connected pretty fast she is 16 i'm 18 right off the bat she told me that she was addicted to i'll put it on the, the word on the screen she's addicted to and has bipolar disorder i thought that i would be able to help her and make her feel comfortable without the use of heavy k c x i can't say that on youtube so yeah i'm extremely introverted and almost canceled our first meetup she is the exact opposite I love the way she can talk without a break because I always feel like I don't say enough while she's able to feel that awkward silence. I usually feel in any conversation. I have deep trust issues and often feel very disrespected by her behavior. For example, her canceling plans three times in a row or telling me she will call me without it ever happening. Yeah, that if okay, if we're in that situation, like definitely boundary setting, definitely letting your partner know like, hey, I don't like it when you do X. Can you please not do that? Or can I show you what I would prefer? Um, or hey, it makes me feel like XYZ when you do XYZ. Sometimes, just playing like devil's advocate, sometimes people really can't tell or they don't know or they simply don't give a shit. Um, and they assume that sometimes you don't give a shit, but if you give a shit, speak up and vouch for yourself and hope that they will change their actions. So let's continue. She also tells me that she doesn't want me to see her when she is on which is very considerate in the fact that she doesn't want me to get addicted, but at the same time, it just makes me see her less and less. I've mentioned this to her yesterday because it's breaking my heart. 
one more each day. I told her that she prioritizes over me and told her that it's okay because I don't want her to experience. Um, no, absolutely no. We're gonna address that moment. That's not okay. This whole situation is not okay. I don't want her to experience more pain because she already knows that it's bad for her. I tried to make her understand that I'm very hurt that she leaves or she leaves early sometimes to take with friends even though I wanted to spend time with her. She kind of broke down after this and told me that she hated herself for her behavior and that she would try to be clean. In the next few weeks, she will try to go into rehab for the fifth time. But because her friend group is heavily integrated in the drug scene, I'm very scared she might relapse. I want her to be alive, to be better. But I can't just push her away from her friends after knowing her for only a month. After she told me about her trauma yesterday, telling me how she keeps on losing people because she's prioritizing over them i was feeling sad and helpless and giving off the impression that i don't want to do anything with her which is not true i just want her to feel safe around me and enjoy time she spends with me i want her to trust me and i hope that i'll be able to trust her more i'm having trouble understanding what she feels and what she really wants have any of you dealt with a problem like this okay and then there's two updates so let's discuss so let's say somebody you know is maybe not well, let's do addiction. Um, their sobriety does not depend on you. Don't try to help somebody and in turn accidentally end up like the person you're helping. Don't think that partaking in something will help you feel closer to this person. And I feel like if this person didn't come on that, you know, come on Reddit and kind of cry for help, they would have eventually been like, well, she's my girlfriend and I have to support her and um, I want to feel close to her, so I'll just do it. No. I know that these episodes are usually kind of like funny, quirky, whatever. But let's just say this. Um, when your lifestyle and someone else's lifestyle doesn't align, and I don't mean something simple like, oh, I'm a nurse. He's a famous basketball player i don't fucking know um i mean like when he's in the streets and you're pursuing a college degree um and i'm not even gonna get deep into that but the reality is that someone's life is more at risk than yours and the other reality is too being around this person you're more at danger and i'm all for love I'm all for relationships. I'm all for, you know, opposites attract, whatever. Um, people who are battling addictions or have certain lifestyles aren't deserving of love. That's not what I'm trying to say. But rather that um, you have to have the skills to be around certain people that um, maybe you're not used to. And especially in this situation, though, she needs help that is way beyond you. You're not a medical professional. You're not um, somebody who deals with rehabilitation. This is also, I think we really take, not take for granted, but really pass over the um, mindset of a teenager and the way that their minds are kind of evolving and what they're seeking and what they're consuming online, phones, music, and certain lifestyles are promoted and certain teens people fall into it and they think oh well it's normalized so it's okay for example euphoria a lot of people didn't like that show because they felt like it was glamorizing um addiction and those things and um i'm somebody who really wasn't a part of that scene um you know i, I dabbled in things and i'm going to detail did addiction happen? No. However, um, some kids try things and they learn quickly. Mm, okay, that was like a moment. I'm not doing that again. I'm all set. Like, I don't, you know. Other kids sometimes are like, oh, I didn't really like it, but like, I need to do this to like fit in. I need to do this to like um, run away from what I'm going through. And other kids also just kind of try and they're like, okay, I love that shit, period. Like, this is me now. So, I think she needs to figure out what the source of her 
drive is to this situation, this new lifestyle she has. Bipolar disorder does not mean you have to do these kinds of things. I know that she may be going through a very hard time. So I think you mentioning that might be your kind of way of saying, cause you're also a teen yourself. So you're probably just like, um, I'm guessing that she's doing, she's partaking in this lifestyle because of her struggles with BPD. She needs to seek therapy, not only for BPD, but also for the drugs, um, rehab. And her being around friends like this, it's gonna just make it worse unfortunately and what happens to a lot of kids that hang out with people like this the what they see is their friends start to die off start to be vulgar but they start to pass away they start to have worsened quality of life they start to kind of stay behind their peers and um i was somebody in school who was like friends with a little bit of everybody okay so i did have friends that were you know like in this lifestyle and we just couldn't relate really on many things because a lot of their life centered around you know so also it's like not only does she have to deal with what she has consumed what she's dealing with medically but also what it's gonna feel like when it's out of her system if you have a family member or know somebody or you're dating somebody who's dealing with that and let's say you've known them your whole life so it's a little harder than just dating them for a month the best thing you can do is prioritize yourself and tell them that you understand and that you need them to do better and that you'll be waiting till you see progress um you like the sad truth is you can't force anybody to do anything it's the same for like abusive relationships. You can say, oh, like I need to go to therapy so you can stop like putting your hands on me. And they might go, okay, sure. But they need to, like people need to want to change their bad habits, their bad mannerisms, their bad whatever. You know, so it has to be a, a personal effort. And the reason I keep saying that is because if somebody changes because you're asking them to, once you stop asking, they're going to stop trying. That's just the truth. Um they might pretend and be like yeah 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 no it's like it's for you it's for you or who's to say at a low moment that they'll be like oh oh like oh, this might like end like i don't know it's like okay then i don't need to try anyway like she needs her own will her own drive her own goals her own passion i think you can be her friend from afar but i think she's gonna hold you back she's gonna start your growth and it seems like you have more resources than maybe she had the ability to to deal with her emotions or to deal with hard times she might be going through through life um all you can do is pass those resources along have patience and then just always encourage her to do the right thing don't encourage her to do what makes her happy being sober doesn't make her happy so you can't encourage her to do drugs that's just because it makes her happy you can encourage her to love herself and you can encourage her to want to see a future for herself you get what i'm saying kind of sometimes with with people in these situations you kind of gotta make them think that it's their idea um <clears throat> till it actually is and it's a very like deep deep subject um oh and why i mentioned euphoria was because i feel like it really brought awareness to why these kids might do these things how they end up in these situations um of course there's some like unnecessary scenes but it is it, i mean high school is kind of like aggressive like that and um i think you have a good head on your shoulders it's not her fault that she maybe does not or she landed in a situation that maybe she didn't foresee for herself um but as a friend you can be there for her and just try to get her back on track you know um you don't need to be her therapist but what you can do is like she's having a bad day she's like i feel like you know doing this and this hey i'm here for you why don't we try like did you go to therapy today or did you go to therapy this week what did they give you like any they give you any like assignments or tips on how to cope with like when you're feeling that way like let's do it together maybe we can go to a park you can journal what you need 
I'll journal with you whatever I'm feeling and we can just hang out. And these people need a lot of distractions, healthy distractions and reminders, reassurance. Like it's really deep, but here's what the comments say. Someone said, yeah, you're gonna have to get out of this relationship. You're gonna break your heart. I age 30, I'm 25. By age 30, you will learn that you cannot save people. They have to save themselves. Don't waste 10 years thinking otherwise and don't move around your future by tying yourself to somebody, especially if you guys end up having kids. Find a girl your age in a place that you like to be around um, and she'll pop up. Give yourself the chance to experience a normal relationship. They said that perfectly. Give yourself that chance um, and just hope that she gives herself the chance to have a future for herself. Okay, last story of the day. Comment down below what you thought of that last one. I know it's pretty heavy. And I'm, I mean, of course, I can't touch all of it that we you know how to fix it. I'm not a therapist. Um, never been in rehab or anything. So, yeah, I'm just sharing with you what I know of and, and all of that. So, my baby's dying. Hold on, guys. Okay, yeah. The title of this one is Cheating Ex Girlfriend Suddenly Calling Me Again. Now you know why she's calling you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I guess I need some advice. I'm a 25 year old guy. I was cheated on by my ex-girlfriend three years ago at the end of my college years. I dumped her, went hard no contact, and then followed her on all social media. Period. Protect your peace. <sighs> years went by of me doing what I needed to do to heal and to hopefully forgive but not forget because the anger I held was honestly making me physically and mentally sick. Yup, it'll do it to you. Anyway, something has been occurring over the last, I would say, year and a half at random moments. She calls me once every couple of months or so to talk about her life and acts about mine. I'm not gonna tell y'all what I really think because I'm being rude in my head right now. To give information, the initial phone calls were heavily slanted with her talking about how she was sorry for the way she hurt me. Then the calls started to change toward her making statements like I changed. <sighs> what does that have to do with me? Congrats. Hinting at the infidelity but not explicitly talking about it. Anyways, each phone call seems to ramp up from her side specifically flirting talking about some of the good times when we dated talking about how all her friends are getting married talking to me about that she wants what she wants in a partner just talking i guess from a valley perspective no it's giving um i did what i did but anyways everyone around me is getting married and checking my roster, you're the one that I think I want to tie down to till I'm maybe ready to cheat again. She asked me to be a plus one at her friend's wedding. She always calls me, I never call her. She also suggests for us to hang out, but flake last minute for numerous occasions. Yeah, okay. I now live 15 hours from her, still asks me to be the plus one. Um, is there some kind of hidden motive to these phone calls? I don't know. I feel like she's using me as an emotional tampon. I'm confused about about why she would do it, be doing this. Guys, uh, hello. If a woman cut you off and let's say y'all don't even date. She cut you off and she's spinning the block again to hit you up. It's because obviously she wants you back. She's forgiving. I mean, she's um, she's apologizing for what she did telling you what her new interests are and trying to keep you considered and trying to keep you on the block. And the only reason she's replying, keeps hitting up is because you keep replying. I can't, I just, sometimes I'm like, guys, I, I men just kind of be like, you don't, do you not see it? Is it because she's not saying it like to your face? I want you back. It's obvious. And, you need to cut her ass off. This somebody said, I'm gonna be blunt. Stop the contacts, I'm good for you. Next time she calls, tell her you are not gonna be her plus one. Tell her that, I, that it's good she changed and that she must remember you will never forget. 
tell her you do not see any advantages in keeping in contact with her literally any of the 15 hours away. And it's given like she's, I'm going to say desperate because she knows she did you wrong. She can talk to anybody the fuck else. She wants to give no effort to somebody new. She wants to see how far away she can get with whatever. Um, cross your boundary and kind of move on from what she did to you. I feel like somebody who actually moved on wouldn't even try you again. Because they don't even want to put you in that situation. I don't know. That's kind of like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, like I've had some people, because I haven't had boyfriends really um but i've had some people send the blog and they did me dirty and i'm like they're like i changed and whatever and i'm like well, that's good for you that's good for you i'm glad you can be a better person to the next person you talk to because i'm really all set with that situation and it is what it is you're entitled to that she's trying to draw you back in she gets a thrill out of talking out of you she's definitely flaking you on purpose and enjoys playing with your emotions block her and don't unblock her ever again. Someone said, I hate to say this, but it also feels like you haven't moved on. Please try to talk to another woman and you don't have to keep talking to this person. And she be hitting him up on his birthday. He said, um, I heard from the great mind that her most recent boyfriend, whenever her most recent boyfriend dumps her, the phone starts to ring. Yeah, no. <laughs> Man, listen. Love yourself. Put this energy, this effort into a baddie, a new girl who lives 10 minutes away instead of 15 hours. Who, you know what I'm saying? And enter the dating world and put your best foot forward. You know? There's so many beautiful women out there. Like, Please. And the same part, there's so many men out there. Like, cut it out. Dressing that man out for what? Alright, you guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please make sure to leave a like. So, show some love. Subscribe. Share this video. Watch the playlist. We have a lot of episodes, okay? Um, again, look at this background. Okay? Um, I'm staying in my parents' house for the week. So, I do have a vlog on that. Um, if you want to see it, come watch because this room is so cute. I deep cleaned it and everything, so you can kind of see more of it. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Adrian, for this cute room setup. And I hope to see you in the next one. Hi. I know you're probably like, I look a little different. The clip, like, what? what is this clip about? So if you watch this whole episode, thank you. If you've watched all of my Zanji Does Teas, thank you. The reason I am checking in with y'all right now is, honestly, literally I rehearsed, <laughs> rehearsed what I was gonna say, but I'm a little nervous right now. Um, so this is actually what you're watching is the last episode of Zanji Does Tea for now. It's a goodbye for now not a goodbye forever basically the reason i'm putting this series to a pause is because the truth is it's been going on for a while you know youtube growth is not linear or not fast um and sometimes series work out sometimes series don't sometimes in this case you put out a series that is very good like a good concept but you put it out too early in your youtube career in the you know so some series really require engagement and um your audience to be a part of that and that's something i was really looking forward to but i think after it's been like two and a half years i think sometimes we have to be mature and realize like okay this isn't really serving right now it's not working for right now and when we get to a place where there's more of a community i will definitely want to bring this back for sure i hope i hope you've liked it all so far um i put a lot of effort into it i still love it with all my heart it's a fun series for me um but there's a lot of series on my channels too there's like two other ones um and we'll explain that in a bit but there's other stuff on my channel too that i enjoy making just as much as this but if i'm being truthful with myself transparent and honest 
I think I could do more with my time um, and my creativity in a different way. And I want to bring this back when we really have that community going. So, yeah, um, you know, it was always fun making uh, these. Um, even if I didn't have a submission for the week, that's totally okay. Shout out to the girl, person, man, whoever that sent that one submission. Like, you rock. You'll always... Um, be a special person in my heart and my little journey my series um and i'm just looking at my little paper because i wanted to jot down everything i want to say don't want to forget anything this doesn't mean anything bad like i'm still posting on youtube i'll probably just see more um vlogs kind of style people really like to see that i'm seeing that's kind of creating more of a community so i'm gonna proceed with the vlogs i'm gonna proceed with the hair videos here and there um, the advice style is not going to stop. You can see a lot of advice within the vlogs too and a lot of hair stuff within the vlogs. But um, I want to keep open the Zinji Does chat series which is the, the podcast um, where it's not really a video. It's just me speaking. I have put that on the back burner for now but I'm going to bring her back and sometimes we need to know what to put away, what to bring, you know, for certain things, for our lifestyle, for our schedule, things like that. So you can always find me on all the social medias right here that hasn't changed and yeah so i just wanted to say thank you for watching these this whole time if you have been that one person that's coming every time um obviously this wasn't planned but sometimes you know we're editing we're we're looking at our schedule we're doing things we're working our nine to fives we're like realizing things the year of realizing things and you're like okay maybe we'll stop her for now and bring her back so thank you guys so much for watching today's video and all of the zanji dust teas um please check out the vlogs those have been super fun to film and have been like really good people really enjoyed those and yeah so this is the last episode of zanji dust tea thank you for watching and i hope i'll see you in the other videos